Yes, that's right. The Survivor Know-It-Alls are back. Sorry about the delay. I wasn't done yet being berated by Stephen Fishback for not <laughs> sending him the episodes fast enough. I do. Th I think I have a reputation, though, for being the reason that we start late. Consistently, you are the reason we start late for Survivor uh, AU podcasts. Is that okay. not true? You All right, fine, that. fine. But yeah. when the bell rings on uh, Wednesday nights, I'm yeah. ready to go. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I care about all of the things. You just care about some of the things. Yeah. All um, right. So here we are, Stephen. Hey, it's time for the Pagong Show. Wow. Wow. What a what a great couple of episodes this was. <laughs> Not. <laughs> oh my God, uh, Stephen! I can't yeah. believe it. Uh, we lost Kylie and Sue this week on wow. Australian Survivor. It's an old lady lockalypse. <laughs> yes. Yes. Our, no, I mean, I don't know. How old was Kylie? I don't think she's that old. She's probably, my, she's probably, probably, she's probably younger than me. You're right. You're probably right. They, on Survivor, uh, you know, like 37 counts for, for the old person. Coach yeah. on, on, on my first season was like the older guy, and he was 37. Yeah. No, how about that? All right. So we, we got a lot to talk through, uh, or at least some things to talk through here today. We're live you're talking about the week in Australian Survivor. Only two episodes of Australian Survivor this week. We saw episodes number 18 and 19 of Australian Survivor. We're taking your questions in the chat room. Hashtag RHAP. I've got some questions emailed to me as well. And of course, uh, but 24 hours from right now, we'll be back talking about episode number three of Survivor, Millennials versus Gen Xers. 23 hours, 20, 20, 25 hours, 25 give or take, hours uh, give or 25. take. All right. If yeah. somebody's watching in the archive, it's even less. So yeah, you know what I were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, well, so what, what an episode, what a series. Which one, of, which no. one, um, I have, I so, saw, you know, I think we both take notes when we're watching the things we want to talk about. I have, I think fewer notes for these two episodes of survivor than I've ever taken for any <laughs> amount of survivor. <laughs> well, it's hard because yeah. there's basically this pagonging that's going on. And really yeah. Nick laid this out in his boot episode of here's the three it's Brooke and flick and L they're the three. Right. Then there's a two yeah. and that's Sammy and that's Lee. And yeah. then there's Matt who thinks he's in this, the Alliance, but he's actually not, he's actually further out than we thought. And he's right on all counts. Literally across the board. He was totally right, but he, but he was wrong about himself, right? It's much easier to be right about your perception of other people. Well, Nick what was he wrong he was, about himself? He thought early. he was tighter in with the group than he was. Nick thought that by he the was time he went to... home though, I think he knew where he stood. Well, you mean when they, when he, his torch was snuffed? I don't think that he, I mean that he knew he was going home at that tribal council. I mean, he's like, uh, that's sta standing there saying like before the votes are even read that, Hey, I'm going to go home now. Yeah, I think that's right, that night. But he I think played he, his idol at the previous tribal council because everybody was he thought everybody was coming after him. So he knew where he stood. Before that point, he didn't. He wasn't aware, right? Like You're right. He, You're, he he had thought he was in with his core group of people. He would thought you know like Jay Allen Sue were the outsiders, and I think he felt really hurt and and surprised that he was sort of. I mean, at least the the story we saw uh, that that they had turned on him. No, I agree. And he was in that same sort of spot that Matt is seemingly in right, right. now, where he's yes, sort of like exactly. in denial, where it's like, yeah, I'm going to go down to the end with these people, but then I'll be able to make something happen. And Steven, I really feel like that Matt is uh, coming off as somebody who is uh, being played like a rube in these episodes. Yeah, it's too bad. I mean, I get it from Matt's perspective, too, right? Like, I, he's been with these people longer than anybody, right? He's been with with um, Broken Flick since the very, very beginning. Um, he, he, you know, they were Matt's every, angels. Matt, right, right, exactly. You know, he, he's, um, you know, from his perspective, like this is his group. Like he's been with them forever. Like why would anything have changed? And you know, kudos to uh, Broken Flick for maintaining that fiction. You know, I think that's how you tell someone is playing a really strong game of Survivor when it's really boring for the viewers, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, it was like same with like Kim in, in uh, One World, right? Is was She had such a lock hold on everybody's perception and, and Rob in Redemption Island, right? Where like everyone thought, oh, I'm going to the end with Rob, of course, like it's me. And uh, it, you know, it, it was not. Um, and, and those are really the strongest games and they're also like the most boring games to watch. 
And American Survivor has done a good job in recent years with seasons like this, like South Pacific and Redemption Island, in that they have yada yada the paganging to some degree, where we've gotten right. double boot episodes in Redemption Island and South Pacific. I'm not sure if they did one in One World, and that, that wasn't, you know, it was a, a little bit of a paganging after a certain point, but I think that at least that had a little more juice than this. And we really haven't had one true paganging lately on the show and i don't know if you say that's to the credit of the american production of survivor that they're you know there's enough stuff going on that they're able to avoid a situation like this but it's very difficult as a viewer because i feel like that w who are we rooting for who is yeah. the the good guy in the story steven jenna sam louise is the, sam is the is good guy he keeps telling you that you know, Sam tells me he's a good guy, but I'm not sure where I'm supposed to put my rooting interest. How could I root for Jenna Louise as a legitimate pick to win this season yeah. when a month went by? We didn't talk about her on this recap. And it's a little bit late. You know, you're late to the party, like the night that you're going home to suddenly be like, I want to make big moves. I want to make big moves. Also, like, you know, it's like the Sierra factor. Yeah, where, everybody's Sierra. Yeah, where like the reason that people... Uh, aren't making I thought Lee put it really well. He's like we we it's our movie, you know, it makes sense for us to stick together. Like why would we betray that just for like some arbitrary idea of like playing the game? Like we, we played the game when we won all those challenges and like built this alliance and for like us this alliance is the move. I maybe Brooke said that. It was like Lee and Brooke kind of both both said uh, uh similar things. But I think I thought that was a really strong point, you know, that that they were making which was that you know, the, the smarter thing for them to do is to stick together. When you're on the top, you know, you shouldn't be playing the, the like, let's flip the thing on its head game. And, uh, you know, that's the mo that's the game you play when you're when you're on the bottom. So, like, you know, General Louise's frustration, very Sierra Easton-like, um, comes from the fact that, like, everyone else is playing correctly, except Matt. Let me ask you about Jenna Louise and what she's trying to do. And basically, she's made herself sort of like in that Troy Zan role of like, hey, like everybody, it's like this person, let's make moves. You know, the, like, the, like the Sierra. Does that person ever get taken along? I feel like when a flip happens, right. it's not necessarily that person who is the start of it. Even going back to like a Boston Rob in Survivor Marquesas, that person is sort of like pounds the table loud right. enough that they get voted out. And then after that person, is gone I feel like then after the fact somebody might say you know what that's actually a good point I've been thinking about this for a little bit and I but I never feel like that that person and maybe there's some example that you guys have in the chat of a person that really was the driving impetus for change who then stayed and remained part of the change without some sort of like epic community run well I hate you know, it's always dangerous to like refer to your own season because then you become one of those survivors who just like can only relate things to their own season. But there was, I mean, I felt like Sierra and me, we that was for you know, and Sierra, to be fair, like she she was eliminated shortly thereafter. But, Which, but, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. But but like it was it was the impetus for a move to sort of destabilize the tribe, right? Which was which was, uh, but but then but then she kind of went. She, and you're talking she, about Sierra Easton. Yeah, Sierra. <laughs> yeah, not well, you played uh, with two Sierras. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about uh, fan favorite. Uh, Not Sierra that. Well, no, I never said you played with a fan favorite. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so, so I, I believe I, the game stayed in stasis both times that you played. I definitely think, <laughs> think that. <laughs> like, that, I definitely, like that. Yeah. I don't know. I felt like Sierra Easton kind of. I don't know what the word is like mixed up the game or uh, yeah, I guess you, the one game. could say one could say that she did alter a game or two. Yeah. Um, so so anyway, the point is that I, I don't think it necessarily is the case, but I do think I think you're right. Like the person who's always like banging that gong is kind of gonna gonna Bagong. be the one you're like, <laughs> right, but gong. Um okay, we're kind of annoyed with you, but then later down the line, like maybe something will happen and like you can later attribute it to that person. All right, so there's no sugarcoating that these two episodes were pretty boring in terms of... Oh, sugar was sugar was never boring. <laughs> yeah. All right. There's no coding this. Now, is there hope, though, now, Stephen? We're at the final eight. We've talked about, you know, there's the three women, there's the two guys, there's Matt, there's Jenna Louise, and somehow there's still Christy in the mix. Yeah. Do you feel like, is there any hope for some other configuration that could happen? Really, eight is a tough spot for a big move to happen. Eight it is a tough spot for a big move. I, I think it's pretty likely that Jenna Louise is going next, right? My my strong guess, based on both tribe position and edit, is that uh, she's she's kind of going to be the the one 
who's next out. And, and then maybe there's there's some hope at the next point, you know, like yeah. with Jenna Louise gone. I think you're right. I actually think you're right. Like the person who's banging the, the gong of of um let's get let's make a move let's switch things up that person like takes so much focus and so much of the tribe's energy it like no unites one, everybody yes exactly like we got to get this person out like they need to like chill out like this is she's screwing up everything for everybody then when that person's out that's when there's kind of a calm and that's when people kind of start to stir and be like what should I be doing here? Yeah, and so I think you're 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 right about that. Like, you know, there's definitely a negative uh, impact for yourself of being like really loud. You want you want to so you want kind of quiet because quiet lends people to sort of just like go a little bit crazy and and like start to start to spin. Um, so my guess is Jenna Louise goes next, and then after that, I think there is the potential for for some kind of move. Um, you know, I feel like a move is getting set up here. You know it. By all rights, Brooke Flick and, and L should be there at the end. I don't think it's gonna happen, right? Like Brooke is playing. Brooke and Flick are playing the best games at this point. Don't don't we all agree about that? Yeah, they're doing a very good job. If you're if you're Lee and Sam though, and I know they're all about the mateship, and and the the hard thing to project is we're putting you know thirty two plus seasons of Survivor right. background uh, like onto this, and you have people who are sort of like, no, I'm just here to like uh, like I've never watched this show before. I'm here to right. just be you know have honesty and integrity. And you have these two guys who have to feel like they're outgunned. And maybe Lee feels like, oh, no, I'm actually really tight with L from back at Aganoa. But you would have to think that these two guys are going to look at this final five that's being set up, where it's like, hey, there's three of them. There's two of us. Why would we get rid of Matt? And then maybe even that Matt and Christy have that letter bond thing. I mean, is it possible that that could be a pair, Matt and Christy, where Matt said, I'm never going to, like, Christy, she gave me the letter. I'm never going to write her name down. Is that a potential, too, where Lee and and Sam could potentially look at them as a four now to go against the three women, or is this just super, super fan fiction? I think, well, I think the issue here, and this is, like, I think the fundamental flaw of fan fiction always, is that, you know, when you're watching it on TV, when you're watching it edited down, you know, there's you see these really clear blocks, right? Not voting blocks, these clear groups. Um, you see the three girls and they're a unit, and you see the two guys and they're a unit, and you see the outsiders and they're a unit. But when you're in the moment, you know, you're you know, you're Lee, and you think I'm really tight with Al, she and I are never voting against each other. I know I've got a good relationship over here with Brooke. Like Flick and I seem to have a good thing going. Like I feel like Sam's kind of on the outs. You know, you're really the, the the relationships are all very individual and specific and you're not seeing it in that kind of like those three they're together you know uh maybe you realize that the girls like hang out a lot but you're like ah but l never really fit in with Brooke and you know there's so many there's so much nuance to those individual relationships that gets kind of like washed out when you're seeing it as like kind of like big groups and so i think maybe i i assume that from from lee and sam's perspective you know just like from matt's perspective right it's they see their unit as being the core unit right like sam oh, and lee God. don't think like <laughs> sam and lee don't think we're we're the two guys and we're four and five and the three girls are above us right like sam thinks this is my four and lee thinks this is my four just like matt is thinking this is my four true or false matt will finish no better than sixth place I don't know if I want to go out on a limb and say that. I, I really feel like like something. Hey, hey that, that, look, don't filibuster. <laughs> that was a true or false question. No better than sixth place. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's right. I don't know. I mean, it's hard because. Yeah, I mean, Matt. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's likely. I hope I'm rooting against it. I'd love to see that. I feel like if I could pick a winner here, I would want Matt to win the game, but I'm not seeing any evidence that that's going to be the case. And maybe the light bulb just goes off in his head, but he's almost to the point where Nick told him, Hey, you're not as tight with everybody as you think you are. Jenna Louise came to him and said, Hey, just, uh, I'm thinking about making a move, right? You should be part of it. You're not as tight with everybody. And just so you know that that the girls were talking about your name. Your name had come up and they were talking about getting rid of you. And he went back and told Flick, uh, like, hey, just so you know, Jenna Louise is saying some crazy stuff about how you guys were trying to just so you know, it's not coming from me. 
that but i thought uh, matt actually had a really good response to that and i think it's a really you know i think this also is one of the hard things to like you know suss out when we're when we're watching it which is that you know matt said you know yes from jenna louise's perspective i'm on the outs but maybe people were telling her that to make her feel better and i know that she's really on the outs mm -hmm. and she is really on the outs right she, jenna louise is the target so for matt to say yeah sure people were talking about how they don't want to work with me but like maybe they were just saying that to, to jenna louise's for jenna louise's benefit that's one of the challenges of survivor right where people do talk a lot people do throw a lot of names out and how do you know when the name they're throwing out is the real plan or is the decoy plan or is this like a a, a a name they're throwing out to make someone feel better in the moment that then gets refracted back and you know that's why where a lot of the paranoia comes from it's also where it's sometimes hard to you know that's going to be on film right that's going to be a scene on film with uh, you know, whether or not it gets aired of like Flick telling Jenna Louise, yeah, Matt's kind of on the outs, you know, and you don't know if Flick is saying that because it's true or Flick is just saying that as something to say to Jenna Louise. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, obviously we now know because we have Brooks confessional that Matt is on the outs. I'm just saying like from Matt's perspective, you know, I'm hearing from a lot of people, but like those people are gone. I heard it from Nick that I'm on the outs. I'm still here. Like Nick, you know, Nick mm -hmm. isn't some like arbiter of like what's actually happening in the tribe. And in fairness to Matt, at that point in the game where he's hearing that stuff, it's what final nine. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, is it, it final ten or final nine? It's final ten, I guess. No, final nine now, right? Oh, it was with. Uh, it, it was at the previous vote. It was final. Right. Yeah, it yeah. was final ten. Yeah. And and chat room, correct me if correct me if I'm wrong. We've watched a lot of Australian survivors. No, I think it was it was final. This they're at now eight. So the, yeah, it was ten when right at Nick. You know, Nick was eleventh. So we got down to eight after last night. So the okay, so it's final. So that's final nine. And then you know who, what, how did she have a majority? She had Jenna Louise. Even if yeah. she had Matt, she right. had maybe Christy. Who I'm not even sure she had Christy, and she had Sue. Right. So that's four. And who was gonna flip? I mean, right. L. Who was gonna flip? Right. I mean, I guess they were hoping for Sam. They were hoping for Sam. So I, I mean, I can sort of get where Matt's coming from, but I don't know why didn't this come up when nick was still in the game right and that's where you i i or like i have less sympathy for the sues or the general louises of the world who are so anti-nick and didn't take the opportunity they had to use nick when they had the numbers you know it was like you know going back to um alter game alterations special specialist uh sierra easton uh in in her uh, in blood versus water right like she figured out that she was on the bottom one vote too late you know, mm -hmm. after they had already voted out, um, was it Caleb or or uh, yeah. anyway, someone? I think Caleb. All right. Um, so, so you need, you know, if you missed your opportunity, you, no sympathy. You had the chance, screwed it up. Well, let's go back to the episode at final nine where we had Exile Island, and uh, you were you were rather incensed. I got the sense from our text message exchange <laughs> about the appearance of Exile Island. First off, Stephen, can you have Exile Island with four people on it? Doesn't that like, <laughs> like no the exile. idea of exile island is the word exile means you go you go someplace really by your you're in exile right? I wasn't necessarily. I actually really wanted to talk to you about this. I wasn't necessarily opposed to the twist because I'm kind of on the fence about it. I want to talk through it. The thing I was opposed to was the number of confessionals that you know they have to fill all this time. The number of confessionals that literally were just it's so weird being on exile we're not with the main group you know or it's so weird that they're on exile they're not with us now and we can't talk strategy you know that sounds like maybe one or two confessionals you know you have someone in exile say hey oh, it's so weird to be on exile Was like we weird for strategy. everyone didn't you want to right. know what everybody was thinking about that <laughs> like literally we had uh, so uh, here's my my texts to rob uh, i think we're up to five confessionals about how weird it is to be on exile six next text seven eight nine holy s ten oh my god eleven like there were le at least eleven separate confessionals the entire content of which was it's so weird to be on exile now or it's so weird that they were on exile now talking you know and we couldn't plan for 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 tribal council mm -hmm. um, um and i think you know this is where this is uh this is uh where the sort of shagginess of this of this comes in but the actual content of it i wasn't necessarily opposed to the idea and i kind of at first i reacted really badly to it because i thought 
this is so dumb. There's a chance to really shake up the game. Why split these two groups up right now at 10 when, you know, there's maybe some movement in this tribe. Um, and then I thought, well, maybe the fact that we're splitting them up, it's going to lead to some confusion about who to vote for. I mean, what, did, did you think there was any merit to the twist? Well, I th was more hung up on the immunity idol thing where yeah. we have an immunity idol hidden on Exile Island, which is, you know, a little bit par for the course. But I did think it was odd that it was if you lose the challenge, you have an opportunity to go look for the immunity idol. And to me, that did seem weird where, right. OK, well, we're going to reward the people who did the worst with an opportunity to get the immunity idol, because it's not like the kind of thing where everybody has a chance to get the immunity idol, only the people who did poorly in the challenge. Yeah. And it wasn't like that you could strategically do bad in the challenge. It's like, okay, well, if you want an opportunity to get the hidden immunity idol, you'll have to be one of the first people out of the challenge. And you're going to give up your chance. It's almost really like screw they, this up. You know, eat or compete. Would you rather go to, you know, Exile Island and look for the immunity challenge? Or would you rather compete in the challenge today? Okay, turn over your rock. What do you have? I, I think that that would have been more interesting to me rather than, okay, you guys just lost. And now you have an opportunity to win something just because you were losers. And I've, I, I've sort of felt this way about a lot of the twists with Australian Survival where they're like, we want a twist. We don't really know how to like kind of launch it though. And they're very creative, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, to their credit, they're very creative and they're, they're constantly coming up with, with sort of like fun riffs on the game. And I thought, you know, why not try something like this out? But it, it did seem kind of crappy. Like, you know, maybe someone who the people who needed it most, right, who were really going to be in the hunt for that immunity idol were inherently going to be the ones who were trying hardest in the challenge. It might have been interesting, like you're saying, give those people a shot. Do you want to compete for immunity or do you want to scramble your butt off on Exile Island for an immunity idol? And see, the whole reason why I wanted to cover Australian Survivor was that I really sort of wanted to see things tried out in the field. So I, I do appreciate that they are taking chances with things, but it just didn't, I couldn't make sense around why people who were being rewarded for just being the people that lost in the challenge. And Lee and Flake had the correct strategy, which was like, let's not even look for this. But um, Matt was so, it was so frustrating where I feel like I'm rooting for this guy and Nick gave him all the information of, hey, you're on the chopping block. You're not as close as you think with everybody. He is lucky enough to be on Exile Island and he's like, yeah, they said don't look for the idol, so uh, I'm not going to risk it. I don't know. I think in that situation, Matt's correct. You know, like if you, Matt thinks he's got a good relationship. If he's, if everyone is like, you know what, we're not going to look for the idol and he's out there scrambling for the idol, you know, he'd better freaking hope he finds it because he's next. You know, he really just like ups his level and, you know, ups his, uh, ups his, or, downs his position in the track. He makes his life a lot worse. It is a good point. And the logic that Flick had is like, hey, the immunity idol is more of a blessing or more of a curse than a blessing. Anybody right. that gets the immunity idol, people are going to get it's one of the problems with Australian Survivor is that the immunity idol is toxic, where yeah. if somebody has the immunity idol, we, we can't even live with the inf information that somebody has an idol. We have to get rid of them. It's it's like a, that's a major yeah. faux pas by having the idol. And that's good strategy, you know? It's not good television, but it's good strategy. And I think that's often like, you know, a, a tension that American contestants have where there's a maybe more of a pressure to make good TV uh, and less of that, you know, and, and, and you know, and, and uh, uh, making good strategy can often come at the, the can often uh, come at the detriment of good television. Yes. Where, where here, they, they don't care. <laughs> you know, they're like, we're, we're just going to like play a really tight game. We're going to like eliminate randomness. That's the move, you know? That's They're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. uh, any uh, fond words for Sue on the way out? I, I, I know you love Sue. Why don't you, you kind of give her her valedictory? <laughs> well, I did love Sue in that, to me, she was almost like the Kathy Bates in Titanic character. The, uh, what is it, unsinkable Molly Brown or whatever. I never but, saw Titanic. Yeah. You never saw Titanic? No, it seemed like such a weepy, you know, now I regret it because it was such a cultural icon, but it was, such, it was such a weepy movie at the time. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what you should have been doing with this Australian survivor watching over these last couple of weeks. <laughs> but that being said, no, I, I like that she was sort of like a older woman that was out there. And I don't know how old exactly she is. I mean, uh, she might be my age for all I know, but I thought <laughs> it's been a rough couple seen... of years if that's the case. <laughs> she was president of, of the United States during that time. <laughs> really. 
<laughs> but she was she was uh, a I, I mean I, I love the uh, you know a, a sassy old lady. She was the queen of thorns in my yes. mind. Stephen. Yes, yeah, she was Although, Lady Elena to me. But last episode, right? It was but she too- hated Nick. That was a problem. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, last episode, she's the one who says you know to to. Uh, to flake all you have to do is give me a name you know so so sue was just like everybody else and kind of like falling over herself to you know appease the majority alliance and now when her name's on the block suddenly she's like oh we got to get something going here Mm -hmm. yeah she was a better character than she was a game player for sure yeah she seemed like she should be the, like the truth teller, Lady Elena, you know, person. But in fact, she really kind of rolled over until until it was her. Yeah, it's hard. It's you know, these some of these players, I just feel like we're not really ready for. And again, I mean, it's day 42 in the game. You know, they've really been going That's through crazy. a lot. I wonder, though, I was thinking about this, like, I wonder if it's even possible to keep an aggressive strategy going for that long. And like Mm -hmm. part of, you know, you know each other so well. There's still, you know, they're on day 42. There's still eight people left in this game. There's still two weeks left in this game, which is crazy. You know, two weeks on Survivor is like six months in the real world. Um, I wonder if it's possible to keep a really like aggressive fast moving strategy going for that period of time. I think you need that sort of, you know, if you're dodging the bullets and, you know, weaving and and, and and I'm bringing in this group and I'm bringing in that group, like that works for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, but uh, uh, a month or two months, you know, I right. don't know if that's even possible. Like, like, could you imagine, I mean, that you went through this in Survivor Token Genes where you're with JT the whole time, basically for 38 days. And then you're faced with a decision of, am I going to potentially screw this person over? And that's like a real thing that you're thinking about after 38 days. Imagine after, you know, two more weeks of being yeah. together with the same person. Could you imagine right. you're with somebody for 54 days and then you're going to screw them at the last second? Right. Exactly. Like those bonds become so much deeper and then also you know just the very fact of your stuff catches up with you you know there's it's a real <laughs> challenge to stay ahead oh you know of the of the of the target right and that's one of the things you see people and you know you you certainly did this in amazon right like you bounce back and forth and the challenge was how do i keep ahead of of the target moving you know you saw someone like tony tony block was doing that um you know, uh, I, th- I felt like Cochran did that, right? Like, you know, Cochran's whole thing about timing and, and getting the threats before they got him. That works for, you know, that's like the 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 post-merge on most survivors is two weeks. You know, the post-merge here is a month. You know, it, it's, uh, uh, you know, depending on, the, on what merge you're talking about, I think it would be really hard to keep a, a, a fast-moving game going for this long. I think, I think this kind of format is always going to favor a group of people who stays together in lockstep. Yeah, I think so. I think they need to maybe have some major format changes before we get into uh, Australian Survivor 2, the American Outback. (laughs) Very exciting. (laughs) Uh, Look, can we talk about Matt in the water when he uh, suggested uh, splitting the votes? Yeah, well, it's funny. That's why you don't split the vote. It was a very funny scene. But that's why you don't split the votes, right? Is because the fact that then a third faction can totally screw up the vote split. But um, that, that was funny, right? Yeah, it was problematic because he's saying like, well, I think we need to do a split vote. And well, okay, so Jenna Louise has is is immune. So yeah. you're going to put votes on Sue. And then there's uh, six other people that, that are there. We're all standing there. <laughs> right. So one of those other people. And you don't have a Christina Cha that's there that say like, oh, well, we're going to split the votes and put some on you. Yeah. Yeah, you know, just in case none of us. So we, we just want to make sure none of us get voted out tonight. Yeah. So you're, we're going to put the other votes on you. Um. Yeah, oh, literally cool. everybody else in the tribe was right there. So he he in, in, could only have been talking about someone who was right in front of him. Yeah, magic, Matt. Uh, I'm just I'm disheartened, Stephen. I I still I feel bad. You know, it's it's like I said. You know, you can't you can't keep it up for this long. It's not reasonable. It's tough. All right, well, let's get into some of these questions that we have again. Hashtag R H A P. I've got some uh, questions about uh, all sorts of different things. Let's uh, do our weekly check-in about Jonathan. Uh, Scott Schieffer wants to know, does Jonathan go too far in Tribal Council with his questions? This week, he all but forced Sue to go through the hierarchy of remaining players in the game. As two people who've sat through many Tribal Councils, would you like Jeff to be more aggressive in his questions on U.S. Survivor, or does it blow up players' games? Uh, 
not just also in that tribal council, uh, he also was uh, really asking for uh, the, you know, he was really going back to uh, Nick said in the last tribal council. Yes. That, uh, so basically there was three and there was two. And then, uh, so what do you think? And he's like, well, no, I think it's more, I think he was really meaning more of a friendship. Uh, actually, I think that was, uh, what it was, was Brooke. It? Brooke and well, he was asking Brooke yeah I, I I was really surprised by that I thought that Brooke had a great dodge and then then he was like nope I don't think that he's oh look Nick is, sh is is shaking his head I really didn't like him going over to Nick Nick is out of the game he's on the jury oh no look we've got Nick over there saying that you're wrong yeah Nick's not friendship he's pissed yeah I'm pissed <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay Sandy I thought it was too much I mean you know I think it's a hard balance and to, to Jonathan's credit, right, Jeff was was not at all this hardcore in the um, as or as hardcore as he is in the first few seasons. Jonathan's coming out of the gate pretty strong. You know, I think he's overdoing it. But I think, you know, the fact that this is his first season, he doesn't have this 15 year on the job training history that Jeff has to kind of get that that right balance between letting people defend their own game and really holding people accountable for what they're saying. You know, he's overcorrecting. I think we all agree about that, right? We Do we all agree about that? Yeah. You agree? I agree. So, but uh, I think for the most part, um, you know, for the fact that it's his first season, it's pretty impressive. But I, I also think that he's, he does too much. Okay. Uh, let's take some questions from Haiku our Fishback. live viewing audience. Yes. Haiku Fishback wants to know, am I the only one getting really annoyed with Jonathan at Tribals? He really pushes people way too much. Uh, well, Haiku, we just talked about that. Yeah. Well, but in <laughs> fairness to Jonathan and we're, we're sort of getting mad at him. Like I sense that the reason why he's pushing so hard is that he is having the same frustration right. as, as we are. And I'm yeah. sure that pe that people in production are saying, boy, uh, we, I, we, this would be great if there was a shakeup at this point yes. and Jonathan is like really just trying to hopefully get at something. And, you know, it speaks to Jeff Probst and the job that he does. If yes. we're not feeling like Jeff is overdoing it and people you're feeling people like complain about Jeff overdoing I know it people do. It's easy to pile on the host, but I mean, he's yeah. looking for, he's trying to give you what we're asking for. So yes. I have a hard time really coming down on Jonathan and I don't think that anybody, you know, he's he's not really berating anybody or, you know, he's sort of like uh, he may like really be trying to, you know, get something out of a certain person. But ultimately, it's the everybody has an opportunity to defend themselves. Yeah. Well, although to be fair, like if someone is defending themselves and not giving him the answer that he wants specifically, he's he doesn't he doesn't, you know, he'll he'll do Jonathan. Jonathan, Jonathan. Yeah. I think Jeff gives you a chance to dodge. And I think that's the real strength of Jeff is that if you dodge well, I mean, but then, you know, on the other hand, like, you know, Brooke says, oh, no, there's no alliances. We're friends. Like, come on, Brooke. You know, I don't, I don't, maybe, maybe the issue is that that wouldn't even make the edit in, in um, American Survivor. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Brooke Howard wants to know were either of you ever in a Survivor friendship? Friendship. Hashtag. Yeah. Um, were you? Not really. <laughs> No, uh, they're, they're only Steven. Wow, that's so nice. I yeah. was in a couple. Yeah, I mean, I certainly when we were out there, uh, we had friends, and I'm probably well, you and Alex Bell. Yeah, then the closest that I that I, I mean, I was in an alliance that was somewhat like this, and we talked about this with the millennials versus Gen X in terms of like the alliance of you know the people on the, on the millennial tribe that have this sort of uh, friendship type alliance, and I was part of it, but I also was like looking for other moves to make along the way. And so right. hopefully somebody is going to say, oh, that I, I see how this is going. I know where I am in right. the pecking order and let me make a move and pick up some of these bottom feeders. Certainly you can imagine that scenario is going to be available to somebody when we get to final seven. That's when I made yeah. the, the move in Survivor of the Amazon and ended up voting out Alex at that point. So that's going to be on the table for somebody if they want it, but... I just don't know if they're going to have enough other people to do it. I mean, the key thing there is if this this you know this big five person group they have the majority. So maybe by some miracle, one of them will go home in this next episode, and then you'll have only four to three, and then that really frees up one person to flip to the other side. 
But I think you hit on something really crucial there, which is that yes. final Long. seven is a big chant opportunity to move. We're still at nine here tonight. You know, my season, we merged at, I mean, I guess we merged at uh, uh, 10. Well, Sue was nine, and then, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, your season, you, you merged at 10. Like, from American Survivor, like, this is right when the merge happens. This is not the, the time to be making that, like, big, game-changing, flip-on-your-alliance move. You know, that's that comes a few moves down the road. That comes when some of the outliers have been voted off. And I think the very fact that we've seen so many episodes is kind of like getting people impatient. And again, like format issue here more than it is gameplay issue. You know, it's too soon to make a move. And like at final seven, you know, people are saying, oh, Christy, Christy, she could she could do well. She could. It was a very common phenomenon in the first, you know, first half of the, or, you know, in, in uh, old school Survivor. And Rob, this, this is maybe more relevant to you than some of the new school stuff we talk about, um, where, <laughs> where, uh, you know, the basically most of one tribe would get picked off, and the last remaining person from that tri from that that tribe would sort of win all the votes because they hadn't pissed anybody off. So like that's like right like uh, Chris from uh, from Vanuatu, or I'm sure there's there's a lot of examples of that, right? Where it's like just like that last person who kind of like you know has all of their the outliers votes and has all the votes of the people who are pissed off at the at the at the at the predominant uh, majority. Mm -hmm. There's a question that we got emailed into us from Chris Cameron, who says, was booting Kylie the best move for Brick? That's Brooke and Flick. Uh, Kylie was a solid number for them to the end. Sure, she was a challenge competitor, but she could still be used for a couple more votes before being sliced out of the game. Was it just a personality thing? Why was Kylie the boot on episode at the final yeah. 10? I didn't get it either. Like, didn't like Flake or someone say like she's been my nemesis this whole game? Not something we ever saw. <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit in the in the you know uh, Matt's Angels era of the game. But you were sort of predicting that Kylie could be the merge boot. Yeah, I just felt like that she was somebody who just never really fit in, and she was somebody that both sides, both the women and like Sam and Lee, could also like agree on. It was just like a a Jenga block that you could remove, and nobody was going to really care. Good guy. Yeah, she was a good guy. Okay, uh, good gal. And then uh, Nicole Mena says, uh, "Does anyone else feel like Jonathan, the host, hates Flick and Brooke?" I, you feel that? I, I mean, I definitely feel like he wants to shake things up, right? I'm sure he's very eager for something to switch. Um, 55 day season guy, you know, that's his <laughs> own fault. Yeah. I mean, Steven, if we get down to this final five of Lee, Sam, and then the three women with Brooke and Flick and L, I mean, do you feel like that the audience is, uh, is, is enjoying this? Is this a likable final five? I think they've really set it up where like, oh, these girls, they're so, you know, maybe Brooke, maybe like, maybe there's differentiation happening, right? I can't like, tell. I feel like that we are <laughs> too far in the weeds to be able to tell like what yeah. the casual audience of the show thinks of these people. Um, you know, the important thing too, though, is like what happens at the very end, right? And that's, that's sort of what the enduring memory of the season will be is the way it's presented at the end. Like, you know, we analyze every moment as every episode happens, but, you know, people think about like, you know, people were rooting for Brett to win fan favorite of freaking Samoa. You know, Brett was only in one episode of Survivor Samoa. And same with like Brenda. Wasn't like Brenda competitive for like fan favorite of Caramoa? She was, but it as long as she, she got screwed over with the whole Dawn thing. At, yeah, but she had the largest streak, but she was only a character right at the very end. And so I think that like, you know, she had the, I think Brenda has like one of the longest streaks of invisibility in the history of the show. Yeah, it's a little bit different going back to the old way they did it when they used to have a fan favorite where it would like the voting would be from when the episode aired on Wednesday to Sunday. And if you got voted out that Wednesday night, you had a really right. good, everybody felt bad for you and would, and you get a lot of votes that week. But my point is more that like, you know, you're going to cheer for the person who's the hero at the very end, even if along the way, you know, there were moments where you, where you didn't. And, and uh, I'm, I'm rooting for Lee. Lee. Why? Well, I don't know. He's so handsome. <laughs> uh, I'm rooting for, for Brooke, obviously. And Flake, you know what? Flake, Brooke and Flake are playing the best games. There's no question. Yeah. Is anybody else concerned that Lee and L have the same name, but inverted? <laughs> Is it, that would be eel, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, it's similar. Yeah.
<laughs> it's similar. You could make yeah. them. Okay. Uh, this is from Hugh Davidson. Do you think that the post-merge game would have been more dynamic if the merge had happened one vote earlier and Phoebe was still around to mix things up? Yes. So they painted a scenario where I think it was Connor that might have been saying, like, boy, if we don't get rid of Phoebe now then when we get to the merge then she's going to pull back together all of the original aganoa people with you know that that's that's going to be a thing plus then there's going to be the sanapu people and then there's also going to be the vavau faction i was like wow this sounds like really exciting yeah <laughs> what a great and, show this would be yep it's, yeah <clears throat> yeah it was not um it all goes back to rowan being voted out <laughs> It does? Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it all goes back to uh, who was the private eye? Bianca. <laughs> <laughs> we would have saved Bianca. Yeah. It would have been fine. Uh, Megan Z wants to know, do you think that the producers could legitimately say that the pre-jury cast did not fit on the stage at the Australian Survivor reunion? Yeah. Are they even going to have a reunion? I mean, it's so <laughs> many people. I don't know. <laughs> I actually thought I heard it was like a live vote announced and that there was no reunion, but I, I, I'm, you know, that's from Twitter. So who knows? Who knows? Can't believe everything you read. Okay. Um, especially on Twitter where most of it is just vile racist invective. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just about Survivor. Yeah. <laughs> Sergio Vickis wants to know, what's the best move for Christy? I don't know. Just keep, <laughs> keep laying low, right? I think the best move for Christy is to lay low and kind of hope that someone sees her as a number later on. She got a then, friendship bracelet. Yeah, I think that is the move for Christy. Yeah. So I, I mean, do you see? Uh, like at the point that Christy starts making moves, that's yeah. when she'll be voted out. That is exactly right. That's <laughs> when she'll be voted out. I think Christy's doing a great job of just sort of like putting her head down. I mean, can a Christy win? Like, who knows what the who knows what people are going to vote for on on an Australian Survivor? I mean, like, yeah. Yeah, she, I mean that's it, no, the thing. Nobody hates her. She's got a sob story. That's the thing. And you know what? Like, even like note to myself, if I ever went back, which I wouldn't. But, uh, uh, you know, like, you don't really need to play an aggressive game to win the game. Yeah, it's, it's sad but true. Yeah, and I do think that in America, you can pound your chest a little bit and, you know, give some sort of like Todd type speech or, you know, we've seen people like uh, even like Cochran in Survivor, uh, Kara Moen gives a speech where it's like, hey, I did this to, to win. I, I do think that that is still a thing. You know what? Make to the end. Win the game. Make the editors struggle to to make you seem strategic. That's the move. <laughs> Just put your head down, win, and make them work for it. Sure. Let's do one or two more questions. All right. Ro Roy Wetard wants to know who do we hear more from this week, Christy or Chester? <laughs> Chester the chicken. There was a lot of Chester. Yeah, he was uh, he was out there. I thought it was a harbinger of Matt going home. Yeah. Both these episodes, I had my oh, this is Matt's boot episode. I was sure this this episode was Matt's boot episode. No, he made it. He's uh, he's hung in there. Yeah, he's hung in there. And let me see uh, if I have, a, I've got some, so many like long email questions from people. I know you love long questions. Uh, long questions. Why not? A lot of the stuff that we, a lot of the stuff we covered. Uh, Derek wants to know if, if there's no shakeup in the hierarchy of Fia Fia, is there an element of exposure missing in Australian Survivor? There's no individual reward post-merge. Pick who you will go with you is a great way to expose your alliance. There's no chop coconut uh, challenge or know your tribe member type of challenge either. I'd love to see those classic challenges in Australian Survivor. We might we're, still. We're at nine. Like Nine is typically on like American Survivor where you have the big group rewards. Yeah. Well, now we're at eight. We're going into eight. We're going into eight, but like, you know, yeah. he's saying, why haven't we seen these things yet? Those things typically happen later. And again, you know, it's just the length of the season where it seems like we've been with it for much longer. Um, it's, uh, you know, those things still probably will happen. Yeah. All right. Steven, great job talking about the Australian Survivor. Through seven weeks now, we've been covering this. Almost as long as the actual game of Australian Survivor. <laughs> um, and it's 28 episodes. Is that right? 28, 29? I don't know. The we nine passed the halfway left. point, Rob. Nine episodes left? Oh, my God. All right, Steve, you have a hashtag for, for all of this? Oh, God. You just do this. You do this because uh, you hate ha it. Hashtag game stasis. Game stasis. All right, I like it. <laughs> all right. Uh, we will be back tomorrow night when officially now it will be uh, just 24 hours and 15 minutes away from when Stephen and I talk about Millennials versus Gen X, episode number three. Looking forward to that. Woo!
had a great big meet. Steven, do you know who Big Meech is from uh, Big Brother 18? No. If we sent you a, a lineup of her with a bunch of other people, <laughs> could you pick out which one would be Big Meech? I may be able to pick out a Big Brother contestant just by looking at who looks like the trashiest. All right. In 20 minutes, Stephen, you'll receive a, a police lineup where you have to pick out which <laughs> one is uh, is Michelle from Big Brother 18. Okay. All right. Good stuff. I, Thanks so much. I, yeah. Isn't what? it a Big Mish? Didn't she just win Survivor? That's a different, that's a different, uh, Michelle. Yeah. Anyway, so thanks so much to Scott St. Pierre behind the scenes. All right. Uh, News AF still coming up tonight, Stephen. Wow, you got a big night. I'm, I'm going to watch the vice presidential debates. <laughs> well, 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 I will do my American civic duty and watch the vice presidential debate and not tweet about it. And then I will later <laughs> on tonight podcast about News AF. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care, everybody. See you tomorrow night. And of course, uh, we love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments on Rob is a website.com. Take care. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.